Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to have with me today Dr. Janet Spear. Dr. Janet, Janet great to see you. Dr. Good Michael, to see you too. Hannah, great Good to see you. To Michael, see you. thank you so much for being here with us today. The 31st uh, Lee's McRae Summer Theater, and I tell you, we've had you in here before, and you've got a fa fantastic shows coming up this year, don't you? We do. Mm -hmm. I'm just so excited about this season. Uh, we're doing Oliver, which is a great, you know, uh, Dickens piece, and then Lend Me a Tenor that Michael is directing, and then we're doing a play called The Denim King, which is a Moses Cone story. Yeah, you actually yeah. wrote that one, the, the book did. yourself. Yes, um, the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation commissioned me to write that play, and Blowing Rock Stage Company did it first, uh, and that was their largest selling play ever in, at that time. So we decided, well, we, it's time to do it again. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I tell you, 31 years you all have been doing this, Michael, mm -hmm. and it just keeps getting better and better all the time, doesn't yeah, it? We, that's the goal, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. Yeah. And so tell us about, you know, everyone knows that Lee's McRae up in Vanderbilt, North Carolina, and right. it's a beautiful, uh, tell us about the auditorium there, because it's a fantastic auditorium, just the right it size. Is. It's, it? it's one of the larger auditoriums in, uh, in the area, and it, it seats about 700 people. We usually rope it down because we don't want to see quite that many because it's uh, it's a lovely concert hall as well so it's a little wide but uh, it's a great place to do shows yeah i think you know it's big so it's yes. i mean it really it plays yes. the part by being yeah. so big and nice but it's also small enough that when you're seated right. in there you feel like you're right close to the actors mm -hmm. and on the stage yes we, we built the stage out it's called an apron you know out in front and that that really puts the actors right in the audience's face which is very nice yeah, very it's intimate a perfect combination yeah. so right. tell us now about Oliver everyone knows about the, you know, the movie Oliver was what yes. 1968 yes. was won the best picture Academy Award right. it was fantastic right. uh, in 1960, it started in, mm -hmm. in London. Yes. Um, so tell us, if you would, about the, the story. Well, it's, it's just one of the most amazing musicals because it's very true to the, to the book uh, and, and stays true to it. And we're using a lot of local children, which is going to be lovely, and yet bringing in some very consummate, very fine professionals to work with them. So, uh, and I, I think the lessons of Oliver are timeless yeah. and important. Yeah. Um, sure. are, Charles, Dixon, Charles Dickens was, yes. wrote the book, didn't he, originally? Right, and our attention to the poor and, and how we need to pay attention to those people around us who have, have very little. Yeah. It's a very important lesson. I think one of the famous scenes in the movie, I remember, was whenever Oliver, at the very beginning, they were in the kind of the workhouse, weren't yes. they? And, yes, And they didn't have enough food, and right. you know, they were just giving them kind of right. slopping on, and he came up and asked for more, didn't that's he? That's right, and that's yeah. where he gets in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, yeah. and they sell him. So it's, but it's just a wonderful story and a good family story. Uh, but, but it's good for adults and kids because the music is so compelling. And then the, the kids get a lot of wonderful lessons out of it. Yeah, so it tells a story about an orphan boy and obviously the, the orphans around him. But it is a nice story, isn't it? Yes. It goes through and has a happy ending. And so it's a, right. it's a, great, it's a right. great story. You get all that, but you also get the social commentary right. from, from the time period in England when, like she said, the Industrial mm -hmm. Revolution's happening and society's changing and London's a huge city with way too many people. And so he was really making a whole lot of pretty sharp social commentary, mm -hmm. but it's told in a in a, a really engaging way with great music. Yeah. So of the three shows you're doing um, mm -hmm. this year, that's the first one. It is. And tell us about when that's going to be. So what June June 26th is when it begins. Doesn't it, it does. It goes through July 3rd. Yeah. And uh, it's it's going to be very special. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that really will be. I mean, it's it's won all sorts of what a Tony Award mm -hmm. won a. Uh, Academy Award, it obviously, it's mm -hmm. been fantastic. It's right. been in, on Broadway. It's been a number of runs um, over mm -hmm. in um, in London, hasn't yes. it? You know, back yes. in what sixty through sixty three, and it's constantly you know. revived because it's just it's what we call a chestnut. You know, it's one of those old ones that always works. Yeah, it's, even most recently is what two thousand and eight through two thousand eleven. Mm -hmm. It was over there, and so yeah. uh, right. so, but it's fantastic. Also, how you guys work work together, but you know you. You're going to be putting on the show. You're directing right. that one, and you're putting on the show. And then, lend me a tenor. You're directing that one, mm -hmm. Michael. And and so you have to, you know, really the work that goes into this. I mean, you were telling oh, me yeah. before the show, it's like a, like an iceberg in terms of what people oh, yeah. see compared to what you actually oh, yeah. do. Tell us about that. How well, that works. People are really amazed that it, that we spend so much time and have so much effort goes into this because they just see this two hour, two and a half hour show that they they think happens <laughs> and yes it happens but it happens because there's a, a gigantic crew of people our, our set crew and our costume crew our management interns our student interns are already there working right now and the cast hasn't even come in yet 
uh, and they will be working constantly because they all work for each one of these shows. A, a cast member may only come in to do one or to do two, and these other crew members are there working constantly every day, just like clockwork, and then they'll have to work at night when we go into rehearsals mm -hmm. and they're set crew and they're running the lights and they're running the sound. So there's a, so much work that goes into it and all the planning that goes into, into creating just one of these shows, much less to do three of these and, and three pretty good sized shows. Yeah, and you get some fantastic people to come in and perform, don't you? You, you, we do. you mentioned uh, we that do. it was like magical this year how you, how you, you brought it the people is. together. Yes, um, you know, particularly I'm thinking just the Dunn King story. We do so much on the internet now because I, can, I don't have to go to these huge auditions, I can audition on the internet. I was just looking for somebody tall, dark, and handsome and <laughs> found this guy in New York and then I started pursuing him and sure enough he's a professor at ETSU now. Really? So all he has to do is come over the mountain and do this show for us yeah. and we're so excited. He's excellent. And you have some great people come from all around, don't they? I mean this yes. is so, mm -hmm. Lee's McCray Summer Theater is so well known. Mm -hmm. You get people from all across the country yeah. coming yes. to, to perform. Yeah. Just we get a kid we, in from California. Yeah. Yeah. We get a lot of people that are mm -hmm that are our standards, yeah. people mm -hmm. that everybody knows year after year after year. And you know, your audience will see them when, they, when we bring them in later to, mm -hmm. to sort of do little samples. But they, uh, the audiences like seeing some of the same faces and they see local people or they see people we bring in every year that they, they recognize. But then they also like to see some new faces and so we like to bring in these professionals. I've got people, about half of my cast are people that we all know. The other half are people that people will not necessarily know. And so it's nice to, to bring new people into the fold and some new talent and just new faces. Yeah. So tell us about Lend Me a Tenor then, if you would, Michael. Lend Me a Tenor is just pure silliness. <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely nothing serious about this show. Mm -hmm. um, it's a farce. It's set in 1934 in a hotel in Cleveland. The Cleveland Opera Company is having big financial issues and they've decided to bring in a very famous Italian tenor named Tito Morelli to do a benefit performance of Otello. And um, he and his wife get there and they're typically Italian and they're screaming at each other and having knock down drag out fights. Love each other to death but can't stand to be around each other. And uh, there's all kinds of issues w between the two of them and Tito takes a whole lot of sleeping pills because he <laughs> needs to relax and when they go to get him to go to the performance they can't wake him up so they assume he's dead and they throw another guy in the makeup and the costume and say here you go sing it they'll never know it's not him and then you find out that there are actually two Othellos in complete costume and wig and makeup <laughs> running around this is in one hotel suite with six doors it's what we call a door slamming farce <laughs> they go in one door and out the other one and they barely miss each other and they're on each side of a wall <laughs> posing in the same costume and so there's just franticness from beginning to end and just silly sight gags bad jokes it is just so funny it never stops from beginning to end so it's a show you did spam a lot last year and it's a show mm -hmm. where you go and you enjoy it yeah. and you, oh you, absolutely you just go and it's just let, let yourself relax and you, and you just, don't have to yeah. think for a second yeah. it's just just react to what you see. The New York Times said that this was the funniest show of our era. Yeah. And, and I agree. Well, I start reading it, I start laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't even have to see it acted and it's funny. It's just beautifully written. Yeah, it's a 30 year old mm -hmm. show now. Mm -hmm. it, it premiered 30 years ago this year. Mm -hmm. So it's been around for a long time and it's a staple because it is just so funny. It's like a Marx, it's like a contemporary Marx Brothers movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just fun. Yeah, and it did start out initially, didn't it, on the West End also, didn't it? No, yeah. I think it, this one's an, this one is an American show. Yeah, mm -hmm. but oh, it's on uh, Broadway, I guess. It, it, it has been. It was just done a few years yeah. ago on Broadway. Yeah. It came back as a revival, so it's it's had a new shot of life from that performance because it got great reviews. So yeah. it's I did it about ten years ago as a student show during the school year. And um, I've always wanted to do it again, and now I get to do it with a professional cast, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun. What a tremendous combination. Now you've got, obviously, Oliver, which is this huge Academy Award winning, mm -hmm. you know, from a mm -hmm. Charles Dickens book and, right. and Academy Award winning, Tony Award winning, been around. And then you've got Lend Me a Tenor, which is that one that you can really relax and enjoy. Right. And then you've got Denim King, which is right. not only a, a great musical, but it's also appropriate for our area here, isn't yes. it? Tell us about how the, that, yes. story, uh, that story. 
Well, uh, you know, there was a lot of research that goes behind the story. And, and, and one thing of interest that you might want to know is we start the show very simply in front of the curtain, uh, with just with, with pieces. And then at the end of the act, we build that house on stage. And you know the mansion is in Bloin Rock, this huge mansion. And of course, we're not building the whole thing, but we're, but we're, we're building a, a big piece of it on the stage. And the rest of it happens in, in context of the house. Yeah. Um, so it's, I, I think the interesting thing is that the Cones came to the South after the Civil War and really helped save it. They, they put people to work, you know, in Greensboro and in Asheville and in, in Jonesboro and uh, uh, in Asheville. They, they put people to work and they created denim and sold it to Levi Strauss and the rest is history. So the story is a, an amazing story. Jewish immigrants yeah. who made this happen. And it's right um, up the road here. Right up the Moses road. The Moses Code Manor. Right. Yeah. That right. was his summer home, but he, he, he is buried there because he loved that home so much wanted it to be Jeffersonian. Um, and, and, and it's really important because, you know, a lot of people, we, we all know Moses Cone, you know, mm -hmm. there uh, off mm -hmm. the Blue Ridge Parkway, mm -hmm. but it's, to know the, whole, the story is- It's a is, great story. It's a great story. You know, we all yeah. don't know that as a, right. a, 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 you know, just an average person around, yeah. you know, we, we, we know the name, but we don't know what he, you know, what he represents and everything. Right. And it's it, a love story. He was so in love with his wife. And, uh, it's, and it's, it's, not, it's not like going to say Biltmore where you can see the house in its original glory, mm -hmm. because when you go here, you're seeing it now as the Parkway Craft Center. Mm -hmm. But you can go through the house and, and, and just imagine what it was like for Moses and Bertha to live there. He didn't live there very long because he died not mm -hmm. too many years after right. the house was finished. But Bertha lived there until she died in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. So the, the house has a long history, and of course it is something you can go to and, and, and see, and you can even take tours upstairs. There's nothing up there, but... Mm -hmm. uh, well, the you, Parkway Foundation is hoping to remedy that. That would be a to, wonderful thing to have. Fix it up. So. Janet, tell us about when you wrote it. Just tell us how that all came about and brought, came together. Well, a fellow named Hal Medford was in charge of the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation at the time, and, and he came to my house and said, would you write a play about this? And I went, I went that sounds good. Let me do some research. And I did. I, I researched mainly Phil Noblet's book called A Mansion in the Mountains. And, uh, and then I said, this is a musical. And said, could I add my composer friend? And we did and got together. And it's just been a joy. It's just the story is, is so compelling and, and so engaging. And it, it was, I won't say easy to write, but, but came pretty fluidly. And then since Blowing Rock did it in 2005, we've tweaked it a lot. We've added a shape note number for the mountain people. And, uh, um, and added a soliloquy. It's it's just lovely. Yeah. And and what, what's fun too is I was in it from the beginning, mm -hmm. doing all the readings because this has been a long process to to go through doing this. Uh, when they first created it, we would have just sit around with the script in front of us and the Parkway folks would come listen and say what they you know, put in their two cents worth and we would listen to it and get other feedback and then they would go back and play with it and tweak it a little more and then of course we got to do it in Blowing Rock and since then okay what worked there what didn't work what do we need what can make it better and so they've they've gone back and played with it so it's a it's a not really ever an ending process in some ways you just keep keep redoing it and revamping it and, and tweaking it and playing with it. And so it's been really fun to see the process from the very, very beginnings all the way up to whatever it ends up being now as, yeah. as we're doing a new version. And, and Michael, you're going to be actually performing in that one. Jen is directing and you're actually in it. I, so. was in the, I was in the production in Blowing Rock. Yeah. I got to play a crooked bookkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> this time I get to play the, uh, the, the, the groundskeeper, I think, of, the, yeah. of the, the supervisor of the estate. But, and people still remember him. Yeah. He's, he was supposed to be pretty classy and educated, so Mike's got... Yeah, that's, my, right. that's Mike. Let's that see what happens. Yeah. A gentle soul. <laughs> that'll be really that's going to be a great story and you so you'll be directing one while we're doing rehearsals as an and actor and then we'll and have the other. to have to put aside directing and then go off mm -hmm. and learn the lines and, and be in rehearsal so you rehearse during the day for this mm -hmm. one while my show is going up at night right. so but once once my show goes up when a director sees that it's ready and you 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 have your first audience you just let it go and it's like okay it's yours cast you do it yeah now it's now it's yours and you have fun with it and the director doesn't have to do as much 
uh, so I can concentrate on doing the next yeah. one. <laughs> So what a tremendous combination, the three that, musicals that you have going on here. Tell us, Janet, how do you, it must take a huge amount of effort to make the decisions on it what It does. What, what I agonize do. over what we're going to do yeah. because it's so crucial. It, yeah. You know, what, what we pick to do has to, to please, we have lots and lots of older folks in gated communities, uh, and yet we're still trying to get the next generation in um, and also uh, get people with families. It's it is a very very hard decision, and I agonize over it every year. But I have an advisory board, and they help me. Yeah. Um, they they bring in ideas of what people want to see, and and things like that. So we we really work on that very hard. So you have to you try to get a combination, like a contrast, don't you? Like yes. different mm -hmm. types, yes. so that it appeals to different right. different people. Right. And, but tell us, I'm sure that there's people that come back, you know, that really look forward to it. And every year, you know, you see, the, you see some people who have enjoyed it so much that, you know, they'll come back year after year, right. won't they? Right. They do. Yeah. Right. And they'll give us ideas. They say, we'd love you to do this. Mm -hmm. Or have you thought about doing that? And or, we'd love to see so-and-so. And, uh, we just have a lot of friends out there, mm -hmm. you know, that, that believe in us, that believe in our work. And, uh, and it's, it's nice because these people... Uh, uh, in our territory are people who are, are very theater savvy. They've seen theater everywhere. So for them to like our work in our little town of Banner Elk yes. is very important to us. That's, that's, it, it makes us feel good. Yeah. Yeah. They see something. Mm -hmm. it, the, the fact you said that the theater is small, there's, a, there's an intimacy. It's not as intimate as Blowing Rock Stage Company was when you were in a 200 seat auditorium, but there's still you know, I, I guess you could say a sort of a family feeling to it, that they do like to see those faces. They know people, and they love seeing them in different roles, sometimes very different roles from show to show. And they like to come back and see the same faces out front. You know, they like to see Janet, no matter what she does, they're going <laughs> to want to come see Janet. Um, and uh, it's just that, that feeling that, that we're all in it to enjoy it. Yeah. But it's such a beautiful, you know, theater there, and it's the Hayes Auditorium, you know, the Broy Hill Theater. Right. But it, it is, it, it's laid out, you know, like a huge, you know, like the a seat huge. Is good. Oh yeah, but yeah. but it's just it's the perfect size there yeah. in between that right. allows everybody to feel feel close to it. But right. yeah, but so you've got, so this is tell us about yourselves, and so that our viewers know your backgrounds and everything. I was, we were talking before the show and I, right. I was mentioning how I used to years ago, back in the 80s, love to go to a dinner theater in, yeah. in, um, and, in Blowing Rock. And it turns out you, were, you actually did those right. you know, at the Green I Park did. Inn years ago. Yes, and, the, and then the, the vice president at the time of Lise McCray, Jim Stone Cipher, said, why don't you just stay here and start a summer theater? And I was like, that sounds really fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I wouldn't have to travel so much, but that's what we did. And that was 31 years ago. Yeah. And it's been a great ride ever since. That's amazing. Michael, tell, mm -hmm. us, tell everyone your background and everything, too. Oh, it's been long and varied. Some of us take some time to figure out what we want to do when we grow up. <laughs> and so I came into theater fairly late, really. Um, and I was working at the Watauga Democrat newspaper and yeah. got to know Janet again. I'd met her years before when she was teaching at ASU and um, got involved in the Blue Ridge Community Theater through them and then got brought over to Lise McRae to play piano for shows in the summer and um, ended up going off and working on a, a degree to come back. And I've been there for uh, 18 years now, full-time teaching and, and doing summer theater nearly every year. Yeah. So that's that's way in, what, it, what ends up happening. That's fantastic. So Janet, tell us how people can purchase tickets. I mean, right now they can actually buy them online. They and can. The box they office can. will open June the 17th, but tell us that's about right. how they can do that. Uh, they can buy them online at www.lmc.edu backslash summer theater, and, and we'll have that information for you. Uh, or they can call the box office. That's 828-898-8709. Uh, and um, and they can also go by and just buy tickets if they want to at the box office, I any of those ways. And they can mail them in or whatever, so there's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, and I tell you the dates of this. Oliver starts first. It's um, June 26th, 27th, 30th, July 1st, and July 2nd at 7 p.m., and then it's June 28th and July 3rd at 2 p.m., the matinee show. Lend Me a Tenor is July 15th through the 18th at 7 p.m., and uh, is on the 16th and the 18th and the 19th at 2 p.m. And the Denim King is August 1st and 4th, 5th, and 6th at 7 p.m. And then August 1st, 2nd, 
and seventh at two p.m. So you got a, you got a lot of show. I mean, that's a that's a lot. I tell you what, and I've gone to so many of y'all's productions out there, and it it really is fantastic. To, and the, I'm we sure. Love it. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I mean you have yeah. to love it to do the to, to have the passion. You have to have the passion and the love for it to pr to yeah. create the things that you guys are creating. And to put the time in on it that you have to do is it's a year's worth of work to get ready for it. Yeah. I'm glad I'm retired from teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I ever did it before. But she is. As soon as Moses comes over, I got to get ready yeah, to go back right. <laughs> and do the fall semester. So right. yeah. yeah, it's a constant constant process but my background's in sports but I'm amazed I could go watch a show every night because I'm amazed to watch mm -hmm. what you all create because it's live you know it's right there yes. and mm -hmm. and and it, and by, by being live it it just creates the this atmosphere that you know as a as a, as a person sitting in, in the audience you know you just feel right. a whole so a part of what's oh, yeah. going on because because in theory, it, anything could happen. You know, I mean, it you know, usually does. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like sports because yeah. you could watch it on television and you can be in the stadium, and it's a real difference. You know, it's yeah. a, there's a big difference. But but I think yours is better because you're, you're so close that you can see the you can see the people perform. Well, like there's it, a constant it, give and take. Yeah. from the audience to the to the, and to the, the people show on stage. With the audience. Oh, it does. Depends on how the audience responds. Does the it really? Show, yeah. mm -hmm. The show moves in tempo and things like that. So. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely tremendous. Thank you so much for being here oh, with cool. us again. Thank you. Thank you. And we're really excited about the shows that you have here. You have Oliver starting on June 26th, Lend Me a Tenor starting on July 15th, The Denim King starting on August the 1st, and it'll go right through the, the summer. And as always, the 31st annual Lee's McCray Summer Theater, and it's been great to have you here with us. And you guys do a fantastic job. Thanks, Michael. Thank, thank you. Thanks, great Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, and, uh, and thanks for being here with us on MTN. Our pleasure. You're welcome. Right. And we'll be back with more of the Mountain Television Network.